Good morning, friends. Uh, well, the purpose behind uh, my presentation is to help us understand uh, the history behind the development of the multifocal aisles. I have come across many presentations. I have come across many slides uh, which talks about and beautifully explains the multifocal aisles, today's multifocal aisles. But I thought that it was also necessary for us to understand uh, from where did this multifocal aisles originate uh, so that we can better understand today the science behind the multifocal aisles. So with this, I start my presentation, uh, the history uh, of the development of the multifocal aisles so that we can better understand the multifocal intraocular lenses. Well, to understand the history of the multifocal intraocular lenses, uh, we need to have a concept of the lighthouses. Yes, the lighthouses uh, that would stand uh, by the ocean, uh, by the, the banks of the rivers and the oceans to help the ships navigate. And uh, in the medieval ages, the lighthouses had huge burning lamps right and uh, they used to this this light that used to come from the burning lamps used to be collected uh, by again equally huge uh, of uh, mirrors i mean the equally huge lenses that were built around them and uh, the job of this uh, lenses were actually to collect that light and throw it hundreds of miles away into the sea collimated uh, collimated here means parallel so they used to collect that light from the lamp and throw that light hundreds of miles away into the ocean uh, parallel or collimated so that the ship that is passing through that place would be able to see that light in the lighthouse and accordingly navigate Right. And the science was very simple. Again, um, they used to have this, uh, this lamp uh, placed, as you can see in this picture over here. And uh, this lamp, uh, the light that would come from the lamp would now hit the spherical reflector and would go parallel or collimated into the ocean. The challenge, only challenge over here was that it was a huge task to build these lamps. It was a huge task to build this, uh, this lenses because the lenses were huge. Uh, because as you can imagine, they have to collect that light and send this light collimated hundreds of miles away. So they practically had to be very huge uh, lenses, right? Until the advent of uh, um, uh, one person called Fresnel who changed the physics, the optics of the lighthouses. And we will see in the next slide uh, what Fresnel did to sophic sophisticate this, uh, this optics. So Augustine Fresnel uh, was, a, a, was actually not a scientist. He started his career uh, by working uh, with uh, optics though. So he belonged from France and his contribution will be remembered uh, because he changed those huge lenses that were used in the lighthouses, in the lighthouses uh, into very thin lenses. And how did he do that? Uh, Jean Fresnel understood that much of the refraction or bending of the light uh, that was done by the lenses in the lighthouses could be replaced with much thinner lenses if they had a sawtooth pattern, right? And you can see in the in the right, it has a sawtooth pattern over here. If you see the cross section of the uh, of uh, uh, the lens here, you will see that there is a sawtooth pattern. And the job of the sawtooth pattern of the lens it was actually again, to repla replace the uh, very huge lenses that were used during that time. And uh, to collect that lenses again, uh, to collect the light from the lamp and to make those uh, rays parallel. So Jean Fresnel's, uh, Fresnel's contribution was basically to make the lighthouses much more sophisticated, much more sleek, much more thinner by introducing a sawtooth pattern lens.
So if you have to uh, see uh, the, if you see the concept of the multifocal ion today, it has its genesis in the Fresnel lenses. So the Fresnel lenses collected uh, the light from the lamp and uh, the sawtooth pattern made it parallel, all right. In the multifocal aisle, it's just the opposite, but the concept remains the same. Here, we are collecting parallel lights and bringing it to focus. Again, uh, the, uh, this is done by the design of that lens that is that has its origin in the French lens lenses. Uh, and the concept is the same, except that the function is different. Uh, in the Fresnel lenses, in the lighthouses, they collect the light and make it parallel. Here we collect the parallel light and make it converge into a point. That's our focal point. Well, we all know the contribution of uh, Newton, right? Uh, Sir Isaac Newton. And, uh, uh, but when it comes to the multifocal aisles, the contribution of Thomas Young is no less important. In fact, Thomas Young uh, took forward Huygens' principle of how the light travels and he challenged uh, Newton's principle of light traveling as particles. Uh, Thomas Young first showed the world through his experiment, which is today known as the uh, Young's double slit experiment. Uh, he showed the world that light actually travels in waves, as you can see in the green uh, uh, on the far uh, right, uh, in the below right, uh, uh, this uh, animation. The light actually going through two slits, they are spreading across, that is, they are uh, traveling as waves. And then when there are two slits, they actually um, interfere. And this is called the, uh, the Young's uh, law of interference, uh, wherein a constructive and a destructive pattern is created, right? With the crest and troughs being formed. So uh, we are indebted to Thomas Young uh, for uh, the uh, law of interference. Uh, and uh, this law of interference is again uh, applied in the concept of today's multifocal aisles, the diffractive multifocal aisles. So we are coming closer to discussing the multifocal aisles, the multifocal aisles for today. And remember, when uh, any company works with uh, researchers on the multifocal aisles, tries to create a diffractive multifocal aisle, they uh, start their research with a particular wavelength of light. And in this case, the wavelength of light is generally around 550 to 555 nanometers of light. And uh, there's a reason behind that. Why do they uh, select the 550 or 555 nanometers of light is because, um, first of all, they have to select a monochromatic light, right? Uh, so that they can eliminate the ill effects of chromatic aberration and all. The second is that your light, uh, the monochromatic light wavelength has to pass through that slit. So it has to be uh, uh, a little uh, uh, bigger in the wavelength has to be a little bigger than the slit so that it creates a diffractive pattern. And uh, uh, so, so th th that that's uh, the point over here. They start uh, experimenting with uh, a wavelength of light, which is around 550 or 555 nanometers of monochromatic light. But when your patients, when you see your patients in the um, in the, the OPD in your in your chamber, they are not exposed to a monochromatic light. They are actually exposed to a white light with many different wavelengths of light. So, uh, so you might be scratching your head of what happened to that patient who is still complaining about vision. But remember, one thing is that these lenses are developed in a very ideal condition, but the patient is seldom exposed to an ideal condition. So, uh, so I just wanted you to uh, make uh, to remember that point. 
right? So uh, what the company always claims may not be actually uh, what would happen in reality because of this uh, simple difference. I mean, the ideal conditions where the lens is made, but the patient is not exposed to always to an ideal condition, right? So what you see in this slide is basically that the wavelength of light is passing through these two slates. And when they pass through these two slates, they create an interference pattern. And uh, as a result, you will see that there is a place where you have uh, maxima, that is uh, uh, the uh, uh, a place of high intensity light followed by a low intensity light, which is called the minima. And then again, a high intensity light, and then again, a, a minima, which is a low intensity light uh, here. So, uh, so uh, that's basically, you can see over here, a place where you have a very high intensity light, and then followed by a drop over here, which is called the dark place, which is the minima. And then again, a high intensity light, and then again, a minima, right? And this is created because of the interference pattern. One thing that you could also note over here is that the place which is directly perpendicular uh, to the midpoint of these two slates is the place of highest maxima, that is the highest intensity of the light. Again, I repeat, the place which is bang perpendicular to the midpoint of these two slates is the place of the highest uh, maxima, which is the, the 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 which is basically in physics called the zero order. So the zero order is basically the light of highest intensity. Though there are other uh, places of maxima, that is high intensity lights, but it is not as equal to this light, which is of the highest intensity light. And this is bang opposite or perpendicular to the midpoint of these two slits, right? And uh, if you have to relate this to the multifocal aisles, the multifocal aisles, here would be your refractive zone. This is not a diffractive zone in a multifocal aisle. The place between these two steps that starts, uh, this place is your refractive zone. And your zero order would be, that is uh, the, uh, the first focal point, that is the focal point that usually is uh, created for the distance unless and until, it, for the bifocal aisles. Uh, for example, uh, so so this place would be the uh, the place of greatest intensity of the light, and uh, and and um, yes. So now, how do you place the steps? You could have multiple of steps in the multifocal aisles. In a multifocal aisle, you will have a multiple of steps. That is, here, here you are seeing Young's uh, double slate experiment. There are, there are only double slates, two slates. But in a multifocal aisle, you will have uh, many steps, right? So how do you place these steps? What distance would be the steps away from each of them uh, is usually one lambda, one wavelength of light, right? Uh, so um, this step, uh, would be uh, the next step to this step here, the next step somewhere here, if it is, has to be somewhere here, it has to be, say, this step, the step over here has to be one wavelength away from this step, right? So the light, that means that the light that is traveling from here to, to reach this place, and the light that is traveling from here to reach this place always has to be one wavelength more than this. So here the light is traveling almost perpendicular, say. Here the light has to travel a little more than that, uh, light, that, that the light over here. So this has to be one lambda. That is the difference over here has to be one wavelength of light. This difference has to be one wavelength of light. So this is how the multifocal IUL steps are created. Whenever the difference between two successive uh, uh, wavelengths of light is more than one lambda or one wavelength, they would have to create a step there. Well, uh, the other thing that I would also like to uh, uh, discuss with you is that when the wavelength of light is traveling over here, uh, you know, and when it crosses the slates over here, uh, there is a some sort of slowing down of that uh, light. Uh, it slows down, right? And it's cause it it is called the phase delay of the light. So when the light actually travels to the slates, they 
they get a little tripped right and as if you are um, you are as if somebody trips you when you are running what happens you slow down a little bit you may not fall but you you may slow down a little bit so when the light is traveling to the slit actually it slows down and uh, uh, so and it it reach it doesn't reaches just on the distance focal point it reaches a little before the distance focal point, and that is what is in a bifocal eye, a near focal point, right? So the light actually trips and uh, slows down. And uh, so when the light actually hits those edges of the slits, it trips and slows down and it doesn't reach the distance focal point, it reaches the near focal point. But the light that actually is not uh, passing through those slits, it is passing through those gaps between the slits, that is the steps, it actually slits uh, it actually uh, uh, reaches the distance focal point so that is the fundamental principle here So uh, to create uh, the uh, near and the distance focal point uh, in a multifocal aisle uh, or in a bifocal aisle and for in case uh, for the trifocal aisles, you have an additional focal point, which is the intermediate. You have to have some steps, right? Uh, which is like the slits in the Young's double slit experiment, which would trip the light, which would cause the phase delay and which would help the light to fall on the near focal point or on the intermediate focal point in case of the trifocal aisles. And uh, there are many different types of steps that are designed in many different types of lenses. For example, in one lens, you can see over here, um, I'm sure uh, you will identify the lens on the left side. It has a, a diffractive uh, steps within the central, uh, uh, central zone, uh, six millimeter zone. It, it is not, it does not have a, diffractive step throughout the uh, optic. And on the right picture, uh, there are many IULs, multifocal IULs that are created uh, uh, the, where the steps are uh, from the center to the periphery. And remember in the, in the, uh, in this part, uh, 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 let me try to show you here. Uh, this is the bull's eye of this, uh, of the lens. This is the bull's eye of the lens. Uh, so in this part, uh, uh, when the light actually passes through, this is the refractive zone. This is the place between the two slits where um, actually you have the uh, greatest intensity, that is the zero order of light. Remember the Young's double slit experiment that we were talking of, uh, the uh, first maxima or the zero order or the light of greatest intensity is bang opposite or perpendicular to the uh, midpoint of the places between the two steps. So you have the step over here, uh, you have the step over here. So the midpoint of this place, that is the light that passes through this plate is actually uh, creating that zero order in the, uh, that could be your, uh, that now the zero order could be uh, the distance focal point, it could be a near focal point, or it could be an intermediate focal point, that doesn't matter but uh, it is the zero order, it is the place of the brightest intensity over here. So uh, in, the, in the below, in this uh, uh, diagram, what you see over here is that the light is passing through uh, from the left, it is running parallel. And uh, when it passes through this, uh, through the central bull's eye, 
here it does not bend it does not diffract so it goes through to the uh, to the zero order which is over here the zero order and uh, the uh, and the place where you have the steps over here uh, when it passes through these edges of the steps it actually creates a phase delay as if it trips the light and because of this phase delay the speed of the light is now uh, decreased and it does not reach the distance focal point or the focal point two it reaches the focal point one while the light that passes through this mid of the steps right the uh, the central portion of the steps would not be tripped and they would reach the focal point two and uh, this focal point two could be your distance focal point and the focal point one could be your near focal point in a in a bifocal IRL right so that's basically the fundamental principle of the diffractive virals the light that passes through those edges of the steps is stripped so that a phase delay is created and the light actually reaches the first focal point that is the near focal point the light that passes through the uh, through the uh, through the middle portion of the steps that is it doesn't strip it doesn't create a phase delay and it reaches the distance focal point right and where do you create the steps when do you decide to create the steps is when you have the uh, the difference between these two wavelengths of light is more than one wavelength you have to create a step that is a step boundary so that you can direct all the light to these two focal points right you have to create so you will see in any lens under the microscope when you pass from the middle to the periphery the distance between the steps comes down because you have to bend that light more and in order to bend that peripheral rays of light more you have to make the uh, the the opening of the slates less right you have to bend it more so to bend it more you have to bring down the distance between the steps more so that was that is in basically the principle of the uh, multifocal aisles some multifocal aisles in the uh, in the in the market is basically is basically having an apodization uh, today and uh, what apodization means is basically that the step heights so long we were talking about the step distances but the step heights gradually come from uh, from uh, and they come down they taper down from the center to the periphery and as your step heights comes down it throw more light to the distance so you in effect you make this lens more a distance dominated lens so that's basically the principle behind the multifocal lens and the history behind it so i uh, hear in this picture uh, what you are seeing is uh, the uh, the zone the, uh, the the different steps over here this is of course the bullseye the central bullseye where the light does not uh, its light actually does not uh, bend and we explained to you this is basically the place of the uh, first maxima the zero order and then you have the successive different steps so so when the light passes through the edges of the steps they will they will actually come down and they will their speed will be delayed and they will now drop and drop somewhere before the first order and it would create uh, the first with the the uh, the near focal point but the light that goes through this place uh, will not actually be have a phase delay it will reach the uh, distance focal point again the light that passes through this place will actually have a phase delay and they will now reach the near focal point the light that will pass through this place will not be uh, having a phase delay but would create would reach the distance focal point and this and you can see over here these steps uh, uh, let me change the color of this uh, so you can see over here the distance between the steps is coming down this step and this step doesn't have the same uh, distance that is because you have to bend the light more to send this peripheral rays of light to the uh, two focal points so that is why they depended Well, I hope that you have um, got an understanding of the multifocal aisles, the history behind the multifocal aisles. If you are interested more to understand on this topic, you can visit my LinkedIn website or write to me 
my name is Shubhabrata Bhattacharya, and uh, you can uh, visit my LinkedIn website, uh, uh, which actually has some topics uh, written on this uh, uh, subject, as well as uh, subjects on biometry, the history of development of biometries, uh, formulas, and I hope you will enjoy that site. Thank you very much for your patient listening.